when uh, Augusto came to London and we were doing Rainbow, there was a very vigorous discussion from one part of the group um, using that word transformation. Um, and it's such a big word, transformation. Um, I, I'm not quite sure I see the value of using such an enormous word. Because to transform sounds like such a massive change. Um, I think to use the, the gentler word change is more realistic. Um, and then there's just questions of the gradation of change. Sure, people have uh, um, experiences of epiphany, don't they? Experiences when suddenly they understand something they didn't understand before. And that can have a transformative effect. But uh, with most of us, changes are gentler or, or, or longer process um, and okay cardboard citizens we work with homeless and ex-homeless people particularly and uh, migrants and refugees and marginalized people people also at risk of homelessness um, and by the time they come into contact with cardboard citizens they have lived their life their life has brought them to this other place. We work with younger people as well. And with younger people, um, obviously their life has been shorter and the whatever trauma or difficulty it is that they've experienced has been more recent. And therefore, indeed, uh, it's probably uh, the process of change is perhaps easier because they are less uh, embedded in, in the life and thought processes um, and habits that they have. Um, but for most of us, change is a, a, a gradual process and it's hard won and difficult to maintain. That's my experience. I always give the example of giving up smoking, which was difficult to do. And uh, actually, I don't find it too difficult not to smoke now, but, um, but other changes that I do, it's difficult to sustain the change. So, I don't, I don't know why people need to be so grandiose sometimes about the aspirations of uh, the theatre of the oppressed. It, it's, it's not magic, because there is no magic. Uh, sometimes, as with any kind of uh, art or any kind of aesthetic experience or any kind of experience in life. Sometimes there is a moment when uh, suddenly you realize something, suddenly you discover something. But for, for most of our guys it's a longer rebuilding process, if you like. And uh, so, you know, they have been treated badly for a long time and as a result often they've treated themselves badly and uh, all, uh, as, you, as, you, as you know, um, the theatre of the oppressed deals with uh, external oppression, but also internalised oppression. And we know that if you're told something enough time, it becomes part of your own thinking. So we know the connection between external oppression and internal oppression. And of course, it's vividly told by the American studies, which uh, found that um, yeah, young uh, young children of colour, um, when presented with images of white and black um, um, figures, uh, they s find often more beautiful is the white one because they have, they've, they've taken that on board. Um, so with homeless people, I mean, they, they, they're treated badly, they're treated as if it's their fault as if uh, homelessness is some kind of pathological condition. Um, they're treated as victims um, and culprits. And so a lot of the work we are doing is, I suppose, to undo that and to help people 
uh, rebuild their lives. And I, I want to make this clear in the end, from the beginning, we never had, we've never said uh, we want to stop people being homeless. For some people uh, to be homeless or to have that life way of living is a perfectly rational uh, reaction to what has happened to them. People escaping abuse uh, or whatever, uh, you know, it's a good solution. But it's, if, if we work with those people, then it's okay. If you are homeless, how can you be more safely homeless? Um, but for a lot of people, of course, homelessness is a very unpleasant situation and it's not something they've chosen and it's not how they want to be. Um, so the work we do, first of all, people meet us in a piece of forum theatre and usually that's their first encounter in their hospital, in their prison, wherever it is. And uh, it's fun. They enjoy the play, and many of them intervene in the play and take part. They become participants. And then afterwards we say to people, oh, if you like doing that, you found that stimulating, uh, we run workshops, come be a part of our workshops. And people come to our workshops, and that's how they become what we call members, uh, members of our community. Um, and at any given time, there are probably between two and five hundred people who are reasonably active members of our cardboard citizens community who come to workshops, take part in things. Um, and some people really grow through the process. Uh, why? Because they are in a space where they're not judged. They're in a space where uh, people have had similar experiences and they don't look at them strangely. Uh, they're in a place where the first thing we look at is their potentiality, not what is not working in their life but what could work in their life and you know it's a positive uh, outlook on people. Uh, it's talent we look for and build talent. Um, and people's engagement with us can last um, a year, two years, five years, seven years. And through that they become stronger. And they become used to telling their stories and used to the fact that people are interested in their stories and used to the fact that they have a right to tell those stories. Used to the fact that those stories are important. And in the, in the act of telling they become stronger.